Hey everybody, we're going to look at five ways that your iPad can use and connect with Mavericks. This is the new operating system from Apple, and we're going to be looking at how we can do this. So first of all, we're going to look at maps. Maps are great. It's nice that we have maps on OS X now. Essentially the same experience as with the iPad, but check this out. I've got this route I want to send to my iPad. So all you need to do is go up to Share, and you can choose which of your iOS devices you want to send it to. So we're going to choose my iPad. And once that's selected, let's go back over and here's my iPad. And you'll notice it, it's not instantaneous, but in just a few moments here, you're going to see a little bar across the top, a notification saying that there's a new thing. There it is, the route. So now we can click on this and it will pop it up into the Maps app on our iPad. So we can look up one thing in one place and without having to copy paste or anything, just instantly share it to any of our devices, your phone, iPad, etc. So it's a very cool tool that allows us to really connect between the two. So that's number one. Maps is number one. Number two is iMovie. So we have a new iMovie, but in addition to that, when we're doing a project here, when we share it, it automatically goes into our theater. Now the theater is really cool, it's much like photos in the cloud, etc. But I can now go over to my iPad, load up iMovie, and in the theater there, it's going to also show up. And so you can see a little cloud there on the image saying that that's on a different device and you're going to be able to access it via the cloud. And we can play it and do anything we want with it. So this is a great way to share your different projects on any of your devices without having to necessarily export them and save them. Okay, so number three is Keychain. Now I can't get too much into this because you're gonna see all my passwords, but when you sign into Keychain on your iPad and in Mavericks, you're gonna be able to share all of your passwords, you can share credit card information between your devices in a very secure way. Now this is one of the functions where I had the most difficulty and that's because when I went to set it up, it has a very, well, semi-sophisticated system for making sure that you're who you say you are. You have to enter in your Apple ID password. You have to set a little four-digit code. You have to enter a phone number. It has to send you a code. You have to type that in. There's a lot of steps to this and you can do it two different ways. One of them is to actually enter all these codes in on one device and then replicate it on the second, or you can request access on the second device and then the first device has to approve it. Now, entering all the data in on both is where my iPad kept on freezing, and then it thought that it had, and the computer thought that the iPad was then in charge, and it got really messed up, and I had to essentially go through and deactivate it all and start over. But when I went through and created it on my Mavericks, and then had the iPad request access, and then go to the computer and say, yes, accept this, that's when it worked. So that's the process I recommend. So the fourth thing we're going to look at is pages in iCloud. Now I have a document already up, and you're going to start seeing some similarities now between this and the new version of Pages. But I just deleted that text. I'm typing some new text here. And then we're going to look at how they go back and forth. So in addition to collaboration, which they showed yesterday, which is essentially iCloud online to iCloud online, other places, we also have this all tied in. Now this is not a brand new feature, but... This is just an example of some of the ways that this can work and with all the new software and iOS 7 and the new Pages version online, there's a bunch of tweaking that's happening. So you can see it took about five to 10 seconds to update and then what I had typed in on iCloud online showed up on my iPad and then I can make changes to this and go back to the iCloud and the pages on there It'll take a few seconds here to work as well. Now this is all pretty seamless and this is a feature that's really great and I love how well these all tie together and how efficient it is and sometimes it's 
faster if you quit out and go back in, but it will update automatically even if you don't. With this one, it has a dialogue, and that's what I'm waiting to see right now, telling you that it's updated before it reloads the screen. So any second now, there it is. Your document was updated. Click OK. It reloads it and adds on the words that I changed. Okay, let's look at the last one now, which is iBooks. And with iBooks, you can see I've got something open here. Let's change a couple pages in this book I'm reading. And now let's go and load up iBooks on my iPad. You'll see automatically it changed those pages I didn't and took me to the same place I was on the Mac version of iBooks. So these are really well sunk together. And as long as you have the settings for iCloud turned on for your books, saying that you want to sync everything, then it's going to do this all very well. Now let's just highlight some text here. You'll see that it's not updating here. This actually took a lot longer, and it's a lot easier if you just close out and load it back up, and you'll see that it's there. So I highlighted on my Mac, and it updated it on my iPad. So really great interaction between these different things going on here. And it'll sync your libraries, etc. So that's number five. Five different ways that you're going to be able to now more tightly integrate iPad and your laptop or desktop Apple computer. Really, really, really cool. Okay, that's it. Check out the full article on padgadget.com. Once it's posted, I'll include a link here in the video. Have a great day.